What's up guys? So this is going to be part three of my car detailing series uh, videos. This is going to be the paint corrective stage. Um, specifically part three is using the compound correcting the entire car. Um, and then step four is going to be to actually be polishing it, which is pretty much the same process, but maybe slightly different. So I'm going to split it up into two videos just so it's not super long or anything like that. So if you didn't catch this already, the part two is the decontamination and then part one is the paint preparation. So this is going to be part three. First step of part three is going to be masking off any areas that you don't want to bump with a buffer or any areas you don't want to um, nick or anything like that. So any areas that want to be protected, I'm going to be doing the trim, um, maybe like the bottom of the mirrors, kind of around the door handles, just because you know, as the random orbital polisher comes through, um, it's going to it's gonna be moving because it has a little bit of a throw to it. So you want to be careful. You don't want to actually scratch. Um, some people tape the top of the tires. I think I'll be fine in the back from what I'm looking at. And a couple other things, um, just sectioning off the areas that I want to be working with. I actually probably will do some of the door seams, which I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you a couple parts real quick just so all the corrective polish doesn't get in the cracks and it's that much harder to clean. So might as well make the job a little bit easier, but I'm gonna be doing some taping here and I'll take you guys with me, so stay tuned. All right guys, so I'm just taping up the trim here. This tape is automotive tape. I believe it's quarter inch, not exactly sure. And the reason that this might make sense for you over just the regular blue tape, is because this stuff, I think, is a little bit thicker. Alright guys, so I got it all taped up. Really what you want to just focus on is, like I said earlier, the areas that you're worried about bumping because the orbital polisher has throw on it and um, really any area that's just an extra, you know, thing that you think you'll be worried about. So let me just show you really quick. Excuse the shakiness. I'm just going to go around the car and kind of show you what I did. This has a rubber, uh, I guess, cover, grommet, whatever you want to call it, rubber trim. Over there, I don't want to be bumping into that shark fin thing. And actually here, I almost forgot about. The sunroof actually has like a felt around the edge, around the edge of the sunroof where I taped off. It was actually felt. So I definitely don't want to get any product on there if I don't have to. And there's no reason to, to go on the sunroof. So I figured I'd just protect that um, rubber trim here, of course. Um, around the mirrors, there's, there was a crack. Not a crack, but you know, space between where the black trim is and then the paint is. I, I want to do here if I can with with my five inch pad, do my very best. But I figured I'd protect this area because I'm not sure that that would do so well with a polisher. Around the lights, just because I don't want to be bumping into it, um, and then when I come off the light, it's just not worth the risk. Obviously the emblems because they stick up. So anything that sticks up above the paint, you'll want to take care of. Here we go. Around the grill, just, just any extra areas. I did the fog light there. Um, and I also did this little blinker because you're, you know, you're going to be going back and forth and up and down. So, and it's going to get heavy after you do this for a bunch of hours. So there's no reason to take any less precautions than you need. I did the windshield wipers, you know, because you're, you're coming up here. So all it takes is just a little extra move. So might as well, might as well try to protect it if you can. I wonder if this is good enough lighting. See, this is, if you can see this light right here, or even maybe right here, but if you kind of go back and forth, there's fingerprints on it. I don't know if you can see any scratches. There are some, nothing deep, but there's definitely scratches and same concept here. You just want to focus the light more. So that's what I was doing in the other video, just kind of inspecting. Oops. 
spoiler, don't want to bump into this. And then here's the back. Okay guys, time to start the polishing. What I'm going to be using is Menzerna FG400. Hopefully you can see that. This is their heavy cut compound. I know Meguiar's has some. Um, that are that's pretty competitive with this but I believe this actually finishes a little bit better I don't need to do anything super serious but I definitely do need to do some cutting today so that's what I'm going to be using for actually cutting the paint uh, which is really you are cutting the paint when you use this um, and it's really what it's doing is leveling the paint out um, and taking all the scratches and evening them out and then when you polish it you actually fine them up even more so that's what this cutting compound does I'm going to be using the Porter Cable 7424XP, which is uh, definitely a, a solid machine for the price, um, you know, under 200 bucks, and you can change the pad size and all that. And uh, speaking of the pad size, I have a 5-inch Meguiar's cutting microfiber pad. These are supposed to be a little bit more efficient and more effective, so that's what I'm going to be using today. I also have a, uh, a pad brush that I'm going to be using to sort of fluff up and agitate the fibers every panel. You want to be working in pr pretty much a 20 by 20. So I don't know, maybe I'll split this trunk in two just to see. But every panel you want to be fluffing up the pads and probably have at least three or four for every car just because they get worn out. I think the foam pads, you might not need as many. I, I don't really know for sure. But when I got those, I made sure that I had enough. So I definitely have, I bought two packs. They come in packs of two, so that's nice. I bought two packs of the the cutting pads, the microfiber cutting pads, but you wanna, in between each panel, you still wanna fluff it up. Um, I also have my regular flashlight I'm gonna be checking, so I'm gonna kinda do a test panel. Um, this, I'm gonna do this half of the trunk just cause the lighting's good and you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. And then pretty much the rest of the car like that. So if this turns out good, um, I might just do the whole car with this compound. I do have one that's a little bit lighter, uh, less aggressive, but I don't know if I'll be using that. And um, this is a CarPro eraser, which pretty much takes out any oils um, or any, anything that's remaining after you cut the paint. There's, you know, it absorbs it as opposed to just an IPA mix where it sort of just kills it. I, I don't really know how to explain it that well, but this pretty much seems to absorb it. And then when you wipe it, it's gone. So that's what this stuff is. Um, I'm going to be using it on every panel just to make sure that, you know, it, it looks good. And I'm definitely going to be testing this you know, half of the back first, so let's get started. Just doing an inspection, there's definitely scratches back here. I feel like the trunk is the worst for some reason. Since the car was left overnight, just want to make sure there's no extra dust, because who knows what can happen in this garage here, so just give it a quick little dusting. I'm sure it's fine, but you never know gonna put probably four pea-sized dots on the first application. I'm gonna kind of butter it up a little bit. Don't use too much from what I've read, the Menzerna stuff. More is not better. All right, let's put, put three more kind of in the areas that I didn't get. I forgot my tape, so I'm just going to mark off about half where I'm going to stop. Normally I'll just put like a little piece of tape right here. Someone's pulling in. Speed two, just going to spread the product around. Okay, gonna increase it to speed five, five and a half. Crosshatch pattern from going left to right right now. 
Hopefully you can hear me. Probably about 10, between 10 and 20 pounds of pressure. Don't go too fast. Up and down, obviously, right now. Okay, over here now. I split the back actually in two. So it's going to be in four sections now instead of two big ones. It is moving faster than it looks, trust me. I just touched it with my pinky. <laughs> Always leave it on the surface. Definitely a plush microfiber. This is the Oh, Uber, no name, green, and it's about 600 GSM, I believe, so. Okay, so that was the surface. Now flip it over, use this side. It definitely took out a lot. It took definitely 70% I think I'm gonna go a little bit slower and push a little bit harder because I'm not used to this machine yet so um, I wasn't pushing too hard so I am actually pretty comfortable I'll go just go through it again but that's the process the whole time you definitely want to be checking you want to be checking your work all the time uh, once you kind of get an idea of what you want to do like okay now I have to make sure I push at least 10 or I'm sorry, I have to make sure I push at least 15 pounds of pressure, um, maybe use slightly more product just because I started out and it was kind of dry, and go a little bit slower. But it definitely, I would show you on camera, but you're not gonna be able to see it the way that the lighting is in this garage, unfortunately. But you get the idea, and I split it up into this and then this. So maybe I'll do this panel again, that way it takes less time. And then if this is good, then we're good to go. So, um, and by, <laughs> this is just an ordinary flashlight, by the way, just an LED works just fine for me at least right now so all right so let's get to it um, I might show you a couple other spots but this is pretty much the corrective stage you want to be using a you know a more aggressive product to really get the scratches out before you polish <laughs> guys just have this half of the hood and then the front bumper to do it's been uh, quite a day let's see I started pretty much at 637 and now it's 1230 so no breaks and everything's pretty much gone according to plan you know I had to do a couple spots twice just because you know it wasn't really doing that great of a job I think the combination of the FG 400 uh, this stuff and then the microfiber cutting pad is a good combination um, and the paint really wasn't that bad but I don't know I feel like there's still some scratches that would have came out that weren't that deep so we'll see um, I'll have to experiment another you know in the future in a year whenever I feel like doing this whole thing again um, but I'm just going to show you so I just finished this front quarter panel right here but you want to work from the middle out or from the center out if you can just because you're going to be leaning on it I mean my clothes 
they're, it's clean and there's not anything that could scratch the paint, but you might as well be working out instead of working in and then you're resting or whatever you're doing. So definitely start from the center. Same with the roof. Um, and it's a little easier to organize yourself that way. So just brush that pad out. And then uh, I have a little taped off area here. Start from the center and then I'm gonna go about halfway kind of where this, this the middle of this tape. Um, and then as far as that tape. So I just have some guidelines. I'm just gonna do Four little ones. Four little ones seem to be better than uh, three three bigger ones, so I don't know. So here we go, spread it on two, just to about here, spread it, spread it out. I just wanted to show you exactly what it looks like and what I'm doing here. So spread it on two and I'm gonna bump it up all the way to six. Try to keep it steady. Go back, overlap about 50%. Oh, you can hear me. And I did put that tape line, I moved it about an inch or so. That way I make sure I'm overlapping when I go up against it. And I was going to show you guys a comparison, but the lighting is just not good. say uh, I'm not using very much product so if I were to lift it up nothing would probably happen it would just spin faster but that's it all right guys job well done this thing has been corrected first stage of correction took about six hours and with no hiccups to tell you so really you know I, I did tape off the car and that takes a little extra time and you know, testing an area takes a little extra time, but you know, this stuff, um, this is super, super stressful when I do it. I'm always afraid I'm gonna get a rock or I'm, I'm gonna get something in the pad and I'm really gonna mess up the paint. A lot of the scratches are gone. I would say it's probably about 90%. Um, I would show you, but you know, it, it's gonna look about the same on camera, unfortunately. So I will definitely show you the uh, finished product, but six hours down, that's gonna be it guys. I hope this helped you. I hope you get some insight into what I do and what I love. Um, the landlord is actually here and they were just dumbfounded. They were amazed at you know the process that I go through. But you have to do it. If you wanna do it, do it right. And um, that's it. So stick around for the next video. That's gonna be polishing like I said. And then I'm gonna be sealing the car, which is the last step. So stick around and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.